Did I miss something? When did things change? I've either been smacked on the head too many times that my short-term memory has been compromised, or I just stopped paying attention because I've been repeatedly fed over the last several years that stereotypes and cliches are bad. Yet I watched Shang-Chi, The Legend of the Ten Rings, and that's taken multiple pages from Asian stereotypes and cultural cliches, and injected it with Tremblone, and then the result was a highly entertaining movie. I honestly wasn't expecting much from this film, considering the trailer simply looked boring and a little bit without essence. Maybe from the film I got a bit too much at times and a little bit too little, but honestly, compared to the crap that we've gotten from Marvel this year, I was pleasantly surprised. Simu Lee, or Lou, I don't know how to say his name, he did an awesome job at playing Sean, the title character Shang-Chi, and let me remind you, Sean is a great name. I don't believe that I've seen him in anything else, so the star power behind this film wasn't really there, but he did an awesome job at it. He was highly likable, he had the acting chops, and he had a lot of charisma, which I can proudly say, I'm now a fan. And I'll be keeping an eye open for what he has done in the past and is going to be doing in the future. Tony Chiu Wao Lung, as the Mandarin, was one of the better Marvel villains. They actually managed to flesh this character out a lot, which Marvel is notorious for putting their villains on the sideline. But you understood what he was doing. He had drive, which wasn't just destroy the world. It just happened that what he wanted more than anything, he was willing to destroy the world for. Saying that, I was not particularly happy with the way he looked. After all, the Mandarin really has more of a Fu Manchu look about him. And well, this guy didn't exactly portray that. He did a great performance. Just the only thing I would change is his appearance. Aquafina, I have never liked. Haven't liked her in a single thing I've seen. She's annoying, loud, obnoxious. But in this movie, nothing really changed. Same old girl. She did manage to tone it down a little bit for the second half of the film, which I appreciated. But otherwise, she appears to be only playing herself. Character-wise, I do find it amazing how training for about half an hour using a bow and arrow gives you enough of the marksman shift to wound a mythical creature the size of a building. Amazing. Production-wise, the movie looks gorgeous, and considering that the cinematographer is the guy from The Matrix, I'm really not surprised. The soundtrack really had me. Some techno beats during the bus fight scene actually had me flash back to my early 20s and some hard raves. But maybe it was just a conveniently timed acid flashback. The fighting choreography was second to none. Another tip of the hat moment to the bus fight scene. The trailer showed crap. But the movie, it turned out to be a delicious bowl of chocolate ice cream that I wanted more of. But the movie was not without its faults. Way too much happened in it and it felt a little bit unbalanced. The second act, I almost forgot the movie was about Shang-Chi. You know, the title character. I'm sorry, Major. What was your name? Benny. Nobody cares! He seemed to be just along for the ride. There were some very convenient plot details in that they were trying to go and find a magical fairyland through a bamboo forest that changes perpetually. It was perfectly parted as if it was built for a car, and this maze was a millennia old. It was just convenient that they were in a car. But the good outweighs the bad. It's almost impossible to explain this movie in one short video because of how much happens, but let's give it a go. A fight on a bus leads to going to Macau to fight in a club to find his long lost sister which leads to chase down a guy in a mask to come across his dad to find out how he gets to the magical place that is only open a certain day every time a year. They find a quicker way to get there. He learns how to airbend in five minutes. His father arrives in the magical place. A giant dragon flies out and eats tiny monsters. The father gives the magical rinse to the son. The father gets killed by a giant monster. Two giant monsters fight and the giant gets killed by the rings. <sighs> yes, I did it! But now my moment of vanity is done. Some things were half-assed in this movie, but mostly it was fleshed out really well but possibly could have had two movies out of the stories they tried to tell in this one. So, considering the cliches and stereotypes that are now socially acceptable because of this movie, I've decided to rewrite Shang-Chi and use my native homeland's tales, Australia. This film will be called Stevo.
Here's the story. Steve, who is a sheep shearer in rural Victoria, gets confronted by people whilst on the Melbourne City Circle tram. His father, who is a legendary warrior named The Skip, who has a magical boomerang, came to Australia aboard the HMS Endeavour over 200 years ago. The Skip built an empire of coal mining over the last 200 years, and whilst he was driving deep into a gum tree forest, he discovered the Aboriginal's hidden world of the Dreamtime. He met a beautiful woman there and fell in love and had two children. His wife and he had to leave the Dreamtime, but unfortunately she had to go back, which he never saw her again. Although, throughout the time he heard her voice calling to her, saying to release her from this gateway within the Dreamtime. Steve, our title character, had to go to Sydney as he received a postcard from his long lost sister, Sheila. Telling his best friend Margie, the farmer's daughter, she decides to go with him. They wind up fighting in a club in Parramatta, where they are bare fist boxing and there are two other minor Marvel characters fighting, Agent Coulson and the Iron Monger. He ends up fighting his sister and loses. Following this, they talk and she explains how she owns the club and built her own empire after he left her in those coal mines years ago. She made a life for herself. Their dad sent his best assassin, the Deathmate, to capture some magical toe rings from the two of them and their dad stops the fight with his magic boomerang. The father explains to his kids that he needs these magical toe rings to find the dream time and he takes them to the cliffs of Warrnambool where he reveals how to get back to the dream time by going through a perpetually changing maze of gum trees. Steve reveals to Marge that his real name is Steve-O. They go through wandering through the compound of his father and they come across a captive actor in the basement, Russell Crowe, whom has a magical headless wombat from the dream time and he can communicate with telepathically. The wombat explains that there is a riskier way to get through the gum tree forest, but they'll get there sooner. They steal a Holden Rodeo and they're on their way. When they arrive in the Dreamtime, it is a vast area with grey rocks, red sand and many cliffs, mountains resembling Ayers Rock, and a variety of animals never seen before, only thought to be mythical. The Hawkesbury River Monster, Bunyips, the Gippsland Phantom Cat. Amazing. They find a campsite of people who are the Warriors of Dundee, who guard the gateway to the Nightmare Creatures. The leader of the Warriors of Dundee explains that behind this gateway that their father is after lies horrific monsters that suck the souls from people, and the largest of them all, the Yowie. It was only once the protector of the land in the past, the great Tasmanian Tiger, drove them into the gateway and blocked them off forever. The leader then explains that their mum died, but she did leave them a gift, armour made of drop bear skin. Margie practices with the Warriors of Dundee how to use a Woomera. Once Steve-O's father, the Skip, arrives in the Dreamtime, his army fight the Warriors of Dundee and they open the gateway to the horrific Yowie and he escapes. Steve-O fights his father and right before his father's death gives the boomerang to Steve-O. The legendary Tasmanian Tiger rises up out of his burrow and attacks the Yowie. With the Yowie taking the upper hand, Marge throws the Wimmera and injures it, which allows Steve to have the final swing and slice the head of the Yowie off with his magical boomerang. Now that might sound like a ridiculous story, but it really doesn't veer much from what Shang-Chi is.